Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our next edition of Coffee Shop Thursday. Yep, those times when you can sit around with your friends, talk about scripture, talk about the world, talk about the weather, and enjoy your favorite cup of coffee. Out of one of your favorite mugs, I should add, too. Well, this uh, Sunday, our lectionary series, if you use the alternate reading of the Old Testament lesson, jumps ahead in the story of Moses. I mean, last week he was a little baby floating down the Nile in a basket and being rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. Now he's all grown up. He's raised, they kind of skip, the lectionary skips a lot of those in-between things, and gets to the point where Moses has just been banished from the Egyptian empire. He's, he did a bad thing. He killed an Egyptian. He still had enough Hebrew blood in him, and he knew, I think he really did know about his history, because don't forget, he was raised for a couple of years by his own mom. And so he had an affinity toward the people, and as a slave was being mistreated, he killed the Egyptian oversight person, and uh, he had to run for his life. He runs to Midian. He marries the daughter of the priest there, and uh, he has a great cushy life. He's tending sheep, just having a good time. And then it happens. Then it happens. He sees a fire on the mountainside. Yeah, well, it's no big deal about a fire. Except if you live in California right about now. Fire's everywhere. We pray for those people. But he sees this fire. It's, it's a bush. Well, it's going to go out pretty soon. Well, it doesn't. The bush just keeps burning, burning, burning. He approaches it, and there he has his encounter with God. This is his call to go back to his people in Egypt. All right, that's the background to the story. The interesting part of the story is this. Moses says, hey, if you want me to do this, if I go back to the Pharaoh and demand that the people that he is keeping captive there are set free, I better have a name for who you are. Because you know how important names are. Yep, names are, are I mean, the Canaanites, they have Baal. Out there in Babylon, they have Marduk. Uh, it, come on, we have the same thing in Egypt as well. They have, the gods have their names. I need to know your name. And God speaks to Moses and says, Yahweh, Yahweh, <laughs> no big deal, but it is a big deal, it is because of the meaning of the name, when you pull out your uh, Bibles, you're going to see, it's very often translated, I am, or I am who I am. Well, here's the deal with that word Yahweh. That's a great translation, and that's the one that Jesus himself will point back to when, when he's, people ask uh, him different questions about who he is, this, that, and the other. And then he starts giving all these different uh, stories about who he is. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. Right? But there's another whole meaning to that word Yahweh. You see, it's a Hebrew word that we don't quite understand. And there's no single perfect way to translate it into English. It's almost untranslatable, if you will. It's an old form of the verb to be in the Hebrew. So, what does it really mean? It means things like, 
I am what I am. I am what I will be. I will be what I will be. I, I, I might be this, but I might be that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. In other words, I think God was telling Moses, you can't just pin me down to any one name. You can't put me in a box. You've probably heard that expression at some time or another, putting God in a box and how we like to do that and say, okay, now we have God all figured out. God was telling Moses, you're never going to figure me out. You're never going to be able to control me because I am who I am and I will be who I will be. God is constantly on the move. God is constantly changing. God will be who he will be, who she will be, who they will be. It's God is God. You can't put God in a box. And we try so desperately to do it to this very day, don't we? And we can't. And I thank God every day that we can't. Because that means there's a whole lot more that we don't understand, that we won't ever understand until that day when we see God face to face. It's a great story, Moses in the burning bush. But even better is the realization our God is an awesome God and we'll never be able to contain him. We'll never be able to figure him out fully. And isn't that great? It's wonderful. Just like his love and grace toward us. It's wonderful. Just like this day that's beginning to unfold around me after the rainstorm. So that's a pretty cool thing that you can share with your coffee shop Thursday gang. And their eyes are going to pop open. And they're going to say, I never heard that before. But it's been there in front of us all along. God's blessings be with you. Have a blessed day day.